Welcome to Search for Signs. My name is Gary Willing. If this information interests you, please press the like and subscribe button and press the bell for notifications. Well, good day to you. It is the 26th of September. And wherever you are, whenever you happen to catch this video, I do hope you're having a great day and enjoying what you're doing. All right, staying safe out there and all that kind of stuff. Now, if this is your first time ever coming to this channel, I do want to welcome you and thank you for checking us out. Uh, what we talk about here is my trade on the Masters of Wisdom, how it relates to what's going on in the world today and what it means for all of us, religious and non-religious alike. Now, we like to ask questions on this channel, so if you have a question about it after hearing this for the first time or second or third time, in the process of answering questions um, and me trying to answer the questions, you know, we're both learning a little bit more about this information than we would if we didn't ask any questions. Um, but, of course... It's not the end all and be all of anything, and of course, with the uh, answering and question, you know, asking and answering the question, hopefully more questions arise. All right, now if you've checked us out before on this uh, channel, I do want to welcome you back as well, and hopefully that uh, you found it to be valuable in some way, shape, or form. Now, um, of course, we've talked about miracle signs. I, don't, you know, we've kind of gone off and talked about other things, which is fine, actually is what I really kind of enjoy talking about more so than just the, the miracles that are going on. But I do want to draw your attention to this, the background of this photo. Okay, now this is Benjamin Krem. Some people have even said that he was the spokesperson for Maitreya. I believe that he would say he was a spokesperson for Maitreya, that he was never expecting to do it on his own, that, you know, Anybody who, who believes this message on at whatever level you believe it or see it as true for yourself, it's always best to let it, you know, let others know what you know, you know, and hopefully in the process of that, make it easier for Maitreya to enter all our lives, so to speak. So he never saw himself as the source, but, or the spokesperson, but he was a spokesperson for Maitreya for sure. Now, was he the first person to bring to the public the, uh, information about the masters coming back into the world now and Maitreya already being in London? Absolutely. Did he have a unique perspective on all this information and what was going on in the world today that really nobody other than Ben in the public eye has been able to um, really give? Absolutely. I mean, he had a very unique perspective on what was going on. and But he passed away few, four years ago. Doesn't mean that this the, the truth about this story died with him. It just means that he passed away. Is stuff still going on, right? Maitreya is still out in the public eye and so forth. You know, now Maitreya is not claiming to be Maitreya. He's, he's not claiming to be the, the master of all the masters or even a master or even somebody extraordinary. He's just claiming to be one of us, which really, I think, speaks to really who he is because if he was out there claiming to be the master of all the masters or claiming to have all the answers, then, you know, I probably wouldn't be talking about this at all because there would be no truth to it, <laughs> you know. Now, why do I have a picture of Ben holding a picture? Well, he's holding a picture of the hand of Maitreya. It was a imprint of Maitreya's hand that appeared on a a woman's mirror in her bathroom in Barcelona, Spain. It appears like the the Shroud of Turin, like a 3D image of a negative of a photograph. It doesn't appear like a dirty handprint on a mirror. Now, the interesting thing about this miracle, where it's different from other miracles, is a couple things. One, if, for instance, you wanted to go uh, and see a cross of light like I did in Knoxville, Tennessee, I had to drive several hours to go to Knoxville, Tennessee, to Copper Ridge Baptist Church to see the the crosses of light in the windows. If I wanted to see a crop circle in England, I might have to fly to England to go see it if I don't live in England and so forth. Now, the, the interesting thing about this miracle is you don't have to travel anywhere. You don't have to see the original. All you have to do is see a, uh, a photograph of the original. And if you go to the Sharon International website, now I'm not an official spokesperson for Sharon International, so I don't know exactly where it is, but on their menu on the left side, 
there's a there's a link to a whole page of talking about the hand of Maitreya. There might even be a video of Benjamin Krem talking about it. You can also go to YouTube and type in the hand of Maitreya, Benjamin Krem, and hear him speak about where it came from, how it came about, and what it really means for all of us. But as a spoiler alert, since you're listening to this channel, um, if you look at this image of the hand of Maitreya, according to Maitreya himself, it creates a better mind-to-mind contact between you and him. Now, he hears all the thoughts thoughts and knows the hearts and minds of all of us ongoingly, you know, but that's 7 billion people out there. When you look at his, at the hand of Maitreya, it, it's easier for him to pick up on what you're asking. So he says himself, Maitreya says himself, his help is there, you only need to ask. So you would look at the hand, you would ask him for some specific help, and Maitreya then can give it to you without infringing on your free will. If you don't ask him for help, he won't be able to help you. So be specific, as Maitreya would say, you have to be very specific. But uh, I've done this before, and the more specific I asked the hand, the more the help was ver- that came to me was very specific. So I've had several instances in my life where I've looked right at the hand and asked it directly for help in some way, shape, or form, and boom, it came you know, the next day, a week later, or something like this, and exactly how I asked for it. So other times you can you know, look at it, maybe ask for a healing or a blessing or you know, help in some area or whatever like that. Maybe a little vaguer if you don't want it to be totally specific, and he can help you however he can help you. So anyway, hopefully that helps. All right. Now, again, we're going to get into the comments and uh, a question or so in hopes of learning a little bit more about this information together. All right. Now, the first comment was written down several videos ago, and I was going to comment about it a while ago, and I totally spaced and forgot. It says, Greta Thunberg is a master. (laughs) Um, Okay, well, at the risk of sounding like somebody who knows what they're talking about, um, I would disagree with that statement. Greta Thunberg is not a master at this moment in time. She will eventually, just like the person who wrote this comment, but... um, Greta Thunberg is just a teenager hanging out with her friends working on her anger issues. <laughs> now, the only reason why I said that is because when she became Time's Person of the Year and was on the cover of Time magazine last year, Donald Trump, like the spoiled child that he is, tweeted out to his tens of millions of followers that she was a she needed to just hang out just hang out with her friends and work on her anger issues because evidently. Donald Trump has always wanted to be on the cover of Time magazine, has never graced the cover, and I, I'm sure he was quite bent out of shape that this teenager got it before him. But anyway, he feels like he should be on there every year, I'm sure. But anyway, um, but no, there's not going to be a master that comes out until Maitreya declares himself on the after the day of decla- uh, on the day of declaration. So, not long after Maitreya finally declares himself to humanity, we, we get his call to service, his call to change our ways, you know, and we hear his message inwardly in our own head, telepathically, the way that, that it's going to be presented to us on the Day of Declaration. Not long after that, he's going to start to introduce the, uh, a certain group of masters, maybe a little more than a dozen, uh, you know, in sequence in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, one of them will be the master Jesus and the master who was Paul, who, the master who was John, the master who was um, Paul and and so forth. Uh, the master DK, I'm sure, will be in there. So, uh, Joao Kulu who worked with Alice Bailey. But these masters work as a group and there's not going to be a master that's going to go, oh, I'm going to come out first. You know, I want I want to take more credit than my, it, they don't think like that. So Maitreya is the only master now in the public eye but not known for being a master. He's just known for being an average person. Doesn't look like the pictures that I have uh, in each one of my videos about my, you know, that my tray how he appeared in uh, Nairobi Kenya. Doesn't look anything like that, evidently. Speaking very simply to humanity about our ever going problems, you know, I'm sure giving some of the simple solutions, maybe even a little too simple because people aren't picking up on the fact that it's my But as more and more people start to recognize him as my he will eventually come out uh, more and more and start to kind of ramp up his message to where eventually we as a humanity will demand from our media for, to allow him to speak to all of us at one time, thus fulfilling the biblical prediction, all eyes will see him. So anyway, um, 
hopefully that helps. All right, now there's another question that kind of goes along the lines of this. The closer we get to the end of 2020, the more I feel the coming of Maitreya on the day of World Declaration has become very, very close. Um, I can't say I disagree with you on this. And I must say that I've noticed a stark improvement from when you were commenting um, earlier on in these videos about how he was. you thought for sure he was going to come out next week or three days, two hours, and 26 minutes from now. <laughs> so this is a much more uh, detached way of looking at it. But yes, as the days go on, it's for certain that he will eventually come out. Um, the way the masters see the future is they see it an ever-changing flux. So everything's changing based on humanity, based on certain situations, energetic situations. So it's very hard for them to put time frames on anything anyway. But there are certain things in the future that will definitely 100% take place no matter what. It's just a matter of when. And one of those is the Day of Declaration because it's such a huge turning point for humanity. And it will be, it will mark the day one when we have officially turned away from the edge of destroying ourselves and start moving in the other direction. And so, and once we start moving in the other direction, because we'll mean that we have actually learned our lesson to not go to the edge of the cliff. If my trayer were to just give us the answer, give us the help, do it all, you know, he would do it all for us and saving the environment and so forth. Eventually at some point, I don't know when we would find ourselves back at the edge of the cliff. So that's the reason why we have to do it ourselves. The masters are here just to guide us, just to help us, just to show us the way. Humanity has to do all the work. And so that's where SOP Saving Our Planet comes into play. So each one of us need to find what we can do to help restore and save the planet. All right, hopefully that helps. All righty. Now, um, there was a, a few... Um, where is it? Uh this comes from Bloom <laughs> or below me. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that skit. It was the, the substitute teacher was going through all the different names and he, there was a person's kid's name was Blake. And he said, is there a Balake here? Is there a Balake? A, a Ron? Is there a, a, a Ron there? Then he got to uh, Denise and it was, is there a D nice here? So instead of your name, how you put it in there, I'll say below me <laughs> or Bloom, however you want to say it. There is no atom splitting. We get atomic energy from the decaying of uranium-137. All right. So, Blohm, uh, in no way, shape, or form did I ever claim to know anything about nuclear physics. <laughs> now, I did... Uh, it, in my previous life, I was a lawyer, apparently, because I do like to argue um, different points, uh, not to be combative or defensive, but just because... My mind thrives on um, ideas, but nu uh, according to Google, nuclear fission is a process in nuclear physics in which the nucleus of the atom splits into two or more smaller nuclei as fission products, and usually some byproduct particles, hence fission is a form of elemental transmutation. So, whether, you, you know, I do thank you for adding to the discussion, you know, um, but, you know, like I said, well, you know, whether there's any splitting or not or whatever, I don't know. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you ever see me at the helm of a nuclear power plant, you might want to get as far away from that nuclear power plant as you possibly can because I have no idea what to do. <laughs> now, um, I am going to read it in more detail, but I did want to kind of touch on one thing. Um, according to Benjamin Krem's master... He talks about fusion and fission a little bit in greater detail, but he says atomic fusion, cold and harmless, could be theirs for a simple isotope of water everywhere available in the ocean, seas, and rivers, and in every shower of rain. Man must cease his toying with death. Atomic fission is the result of the atomic bombs which destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, even in your other comment, you talked about how you know they started rebuilding uh, Hiroshima right after the bomb, and it's kind of a humorous comment because if you look at as destructive as it was and as many people as it killed at that time, which you can't deny that it didn't, right? The atomic bomb, Fat Boy and Little Guy or whatever it was, the two that were dropped from the Enola Gay and the other, whatever the other plane was, are babies compared to the 
nuclear missiles that we and nuclear warheads that we have today. They're tiny. I mean, they're just, it's not even, you can't even compare the two between what we dropped and, you know, what the United States dropped on the on Japan and what is available for our world leaders to shoot at another country at a moment's notice. So it's kind of a moot point as far as I'm concerned. But thank you for commenting about it. I appreciate it. And thank you for commenting about the not to pee in a coal, you know, into clear streams and pee in the uh, in the uh, tree line, apparently, <laughs> whatever that means, whatever that point was about. I don't know. All righty. Um, the next um, comment question comes from David O. And David, it's always good to read your comments because you you bring up such thought provoking comments and questions. So I really do thank you for taking the time to to put this in here. It says, "Hi Gary, when I read Philippians two ten eleven New King James Version, I read that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father." To me, that sounds like Jesus is more than an ascended master, being the Son of the Almighty. I'm wondering if Jesus, the ascended master, is a counterfeit master is a counterfeit for Jesus, the Lord. I'm a bit confused. Any input would be appreciated. Thanks, um, David. Uh, I mentioned this in the last video. It's very important for each one of us to to ask this question in regards to our own faith and our own beliefs but also in in regards to this information. Is there any truth to this? And it's only for David O. to ask that question for himself. If I, as the person trying to answer the question, and you the person asking the question, but if I'm the person trying to answer the question, if I cross the bounds and tell you how to believe or what to believe, and you believe it because I said it, you've now, you're like a, uh, a crab going from one shell to another. You know, it. you've gone from one ideology right to another ideology. And I'm not in any way, shape, or form trying to create an ideology around the teachings of Maitreya. So, if it seems like I am, that's not my intention. So, it's very important for all of us to ask that question. Now, in the process of asking that question, is there any truth to... Jesus being the only true son of God for you. And in the end, and then you start asking questions about this. Is there any truth to this? And in the end, you come up with, or for the time being, you come back to the your original belief that Jesus is the only true son of God. Then what's wrong with that? I have no quarrel with you believing like that. <laughs> you know. Now, why not at the same time? It's just a suggestion. If I was going to make a suggestion to you on anything, okay, if you go right back to believing what you believed, again, I don't fault you for that. I don't you make you wrong for that. But why not take even what Jesus was teaching about, about love thy neighbor as thyself, you know, feed my sheep, those kind of things, and apply it to today where it's, you know, you could be a follower of Christianity and be a Christian or a fundamentalist Christian or whatever you want to you know, whatever name you put to it, right? Evangelical Christian, whatever it is, or not, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing these out there as as names, right? They don't mean anything, but it's just, why not be a follower of Jesus only as the son of, as the only true son of God and believe that hundred percent in your heart and want justice in the world for everyone, for people of different colors, you know, people of different faiths, people of different nationalities and so forth, you know, why not see it as your job to help in some small way end hunger in the world? Why not? It go right along the lines of what Jesus was talking about anyway, right? Now, the other thing that I would say, and this is just something to think about or question, okay? I'm just throwing this out there for you to consider, David, or whoever else is listening to this conversation, is... Let's read this again. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, my question would be, did Jesus write that himself or did somebody else write that? And there's really no way to prove it, right? Now, what could, I think, maybe, 
possibly add more value to your day-to-day -day life. Now, some there'd be fundamentalist Christians who would totally disagree with this statement, which is fine. I'm just throwing something out there for you to consider. Let's look at some of the teachings of Jesus, some of the sampling teachings of Jesus. What you sow, sure shall you reap. Okay? What you, know, what you put out, you get back. The law of cause and effect. It's found in every religious text. Hindus have it as the law of karma. It's in the, it's in the Quran. It's in the Buddhist texts, right? And it, because it's in the Christian text, it's also in the Jewish text because they just read the Old Testament, not so much the New Testament, right? So, but it's in there too, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. Anyway, so if you were to take that teaching and really apply it to your life and live a more harmless life toward not only, you know, looking at your thoughts, your words, and your deeds as the need to be harmless towards somebody else, then I think you're more in line with the, the true teachings of Jesus than somebody who's just looking at Jesus as the only true Son of God and they're forgetting about that. In fact, actually, every time I've gone to church over my course of my life, which I've been to, to uh, church hundreds and hundreds of times, I can't even count how many times I've been to church in my life, I've really never heard a pastor talk about what you sow shall sell your They never bring it up. They always bring up the Ten Commandments. And so... But to me, that's more of a living teaching than even the law of uh, even the Ten Commandments. Jesus used it as an example about the Sabbath. God made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. But you could say the same thing about every one of the other um, Ten Commandments. You know, God made the Ten Commandments for man, not man for the Ten Commandments. But you have to live within that law of cause and effect. And my trail will be teaching this law in very very simple and general, generally in the beginning, but more and more as time goes on, as, as the coming age of, of Aquarius goes on, he's going to be talking at greater length, length and detail about the law of cause and effect and how it affects all of us, how it causes us to be reborn in, in different ways and creating more pain and suffering for ourselves when we do live harm, put out harmful thoughts and harmful words and harmful actions. It comes back to us as harm. And so we have to see that very clearly. But Jesus was trying to teach that very much so. You know, uh, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. You know, uh, a tree is known by its fruit. So if, like, look, and I've talked about it in the terms of American politics, if the way that the American foreign policy is today, if it truly created peace, would it not be, a, would it not have already created peace at this time? It's just creating more instability, more violence, more terrorism, more injustice, more civil unrest, more everything. So therefore, the tree is producing a sour fruit. It's very simple. You know, Jesus' teachings, just like Maitreya's teachings, are very simple. You know, sometimes much too simple because it blows right past people, right? The other thing to look at is Jesus' teaching about really doing the will of God, Right, he said. You know, there was a, a father and two sons. The father looked at one of the sons and said, "Go into the field and you know work in the field or something like this." And the first son said, "Sure, I'll do it." And I have clerks in my job tell me all the time, "I got it, I'll do it," and they never do. And I have to jump down and do it myself. Right? So, did they do what I asked them to do? Or you know, but looking at it in the biblical sense, did the first son do what he said he was going to do? Did his father's will? No. Even though he said yes, right? Then you look at the second son. He went to the second son and said, I need you to do, you know, blah, 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 blah in the field, right? The first son said no. And then after a little while, thought better of it and went out into the field and did it. So which one did his father's will? And if you look at people with, within an ideology, especially in ideology, Christianity, and I'm not picking on Christians, it's everywhere. It's in the Muslim faith, it's within the Hindu faith, it's within the Buddhist faith, and on and on and on. They say yes to God, but do not do his will. You know, Jesus said to Joseph of Arimathea, you know, what's the, asked him, what's the greatest commandment? And Joseph of Arimathea, love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart and all thy soul, put no other gods before me. And Jesus said, yes, that's true. That is the, one of the great commandments or one of the greatest commandments. But there's another one that's no less great. Love thy neighbor as thyself. But they miss that. So yet you have people in church all the time, and I'm not, listen, I'm not picking on Christians. I'm just using this as an example of ideology, right? They say yes to God. They believe Jesus is the only true son of God. They believe that every person should kneel and bow, you know, in heaven and earth. And they get very sentimental about, about um, uh, verses in the Bible like this. 
But when a rubber meets the road, when it comes to somebody who disagrees with them or challenges their faith, they hate them. Or back, well, like they used to do hundreds of years ago, they kill them, right? So, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? So they're not doing Jesus's will either way by doing it that way. Jesus never attacked anybody that didn't agree with what he said. He loved them unconditionally. Just as Maitreya is going to love those who disagree and, 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 and uh, fight against him, he'll, he'll love them the same way. So, but it's more, but again, David, getting back to your original comment and question is, it's not for me to tell you. That's the problem. You know, somebody early in your life told you how to believe and you believed it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not making you wrong for that. It's just just how ideology happens. And if I told you how to believe, I would be just as guilty as those people who did it to you. But it's more important to ask this question. Is there any truth to this? And if there is, still believe it. There's nothing wrong with that. And even if you never come back to search for signs, it's it's okay. You know what I'm saying? But you add such a, a dimension when you post comments or questions that I, I would... I look forward to when you post questions and comments, David, just like I do with everybody else. But you, you ask very thought-provoking questions like this one, right? Because you're thinking about this. But ask that question to yourself. Is there any truth to this? But ask it for you. You know, don't look to somebody else. Don't look to anybody in your life. Don't look to me or anybody. Just look to it for yourself. And have faith that you'll make the right decision for you and the right choice for yourself. You have everything within you to make the right decisions on everything right? And this is no different. So hopefully that helps. But again, thank you so much for, for taking the time to comment and ask questions on that. But um, anyway, hopefully that helps. Now, given the nature of the questions about the environment and nuclear power that we had earlier in this one, um, I do want to read one of Benjamin Krem's master's articles. Uh, it's called an Invisible Peril. And I've read this before, but it's an important article because it addresses the real problem, the real problem, the major problem, maybe not the real problem, the major problem with the environment today. So hopefully, it is my fondest hope that you take the time to listen to this. If you find this, there's truth in this, go to the Share International website, Somewhere in the master's articles is this article and read it for yourself so you can internalize the words for yourself. It has nothing, like to get back to David's point, it has nothing to do with ideology or belief. You can still believe Jesus is the only true son of God and see the need to help save our planet. You know, so hopefully that helps. If men were to see the state of the world as we, the masters, see, they would be amazed, dumbfounded, and afraid all at the same time. So far from the reality is man's view of conditions on earth, and so lacking in judgment is he about future possibilities, that without help man would watch his planetary home languish and die. As it is, planet earth is in a sad and perilous condition, while each day brings it nearer to the critical. Many voices have sounded warnings on global warning, and many views have been expressed, but even the most dire prophecy falls short of the calamity facing the world today. Few there are who see the immediacy of the threat and the urgency of the steps needed to counter it. Great as is the peril posed by global warming, this, unfortunately, is not the greatest or most hazardous faced by man today. Did he but know it, man is engaged in a slow but steadily in increasing intoxication of the race and of the lower kingdoms. Toxicity, pollutions of all kinds and in all fields, is now the greatest danger to men, animals, and the earth itself. All are poisoned and sick in their own way. Unknown to men, but evident to us, the greatest harm sustained by men and the planet in this sorry tale is caused by nuclear radiation." Men have gone far astray in the development of the most dangerous energetic source. Led astray by greed and the false hope of vast profits, they have concentrated their experiments in quote-unquote taming the most dangerous source of energy ever discovered by man. Neglecting, meanwhile, a perfectly safe alternative use of the energy of the atom. Atomic fusion, cold and harmless, could be theirs 
from a simple isotope of water everywhere available in the ocean, seas, and rivers, and in every shower of rain. Men must cease his quote-unquote toying with death. Atomic fission is the result of the atomic bombs which destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which erupted in Chernobyl and causes subtle death and sickness today. It is that which stands where it ought not, and which must be renounced by man if he were to prosper further. Earth scientists are confident that they are, have indeed tamed the monster and can keep it under control. They do not realize that their instruments are crude indeed, that they measure only the lower aspects of nuclear radiation, that stretching above these dense physical levels are levels finer and more dangerous and to the health and well-being of all. But for the tireless efforts of our extraplanetary brothers in assuaging this invisible peril, insofar as the karmic law allows, our plight would be perilous indeed. Wake up, Remember to mankind. take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.